Facebook later so that book folks will not be upset. Welcome everyone to the Point Christian Fellowship broadcast, Point of Power. Uh, this is our Sunday School lesson for August 25th, 2019. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves, Lord, and we just thank you. We lift you up now and we give you glory, honor, and play, praise. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and who you raised from the dead, that we might have forgiveness and redemption of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that keeps us until that day, total redemption. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. Now, we ask that you open up our ears, open up our minds, open up our hearts to your word, that our spirit may be fed at the point of power, that we might have power when it's all over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are having... Um, conference call going on at the same time. I know somebody may join us later, uh, but right now uh, it's just me, and uh, I enjoy teaching the Sunday school lesson. It's been a while since I've had the opportunity to teach the Sunday school lesson, and uh, Pastor Paul, uh, he's been holding down the, the bloodstained banner, and uh, Pastor, Senior Pastor uh, Herbert has been doing the same, and so this morning, um, because no one else is on the conference call and we can't have a, an exchange, I'm just going to teach this lesson um, um, the best I know how, <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. So our lesson today is a covenant of love, a covenant of love. All right, so with this covenant of love, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 21, Ephesians, no, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Oh, mercy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. And um, we're going to look at verses 21 through 33. Now, I'm going to read those verses out of a New King James Version of the Bible. I think that's probably best the way we approach this. And uh, so verse 21, it says... Uh, submit to one another in fear of God. Wives, submit to your husbands as the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church, oh, hallelujah, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, oh yeah, love your wives. Love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she could be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. For, he, for no one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cleans and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning the church. 
uh, I mean, I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wives see that she respects her husband. Oh, hallelujah. See that she respects her husband. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is one of those hard lessons. Um, this is a lesson that causes much controversy in, in, in all facets of life as a Christian. Because people tend to want to um, discount of this passage of scripture when it comes to marriage. They, they want to overlook it. They want to walk past it. So, so I'm here this morning, I'm here this morning to help us get through this passage of scripture and uh, to help us get to the point where we are the good husbands and the good wives that God had designed for us to be. Oh, hallelujah. So our, our, our key verse, our key verse today, our key verse today comes from uh, 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 verse 21. The key verse comes from 21. Uh, chapter 5 of Ephesians, verse 21 is the key verse. And uh, this verse here, this verse here, this is what it says. King James Version. Submit yourself one to another in fear of God. Submit yourself one to another in the fear of God. Yes. That word submit. Oh, Jesus, he said that word. That word submit. Oh, man. That word has caused many people problems. We're going to come back to it in a minute. Our next part of, uh, uh, the next thing I want to tell you is, is how we're going to do this lesson. Um, we got some lesson aims we're going to be dealing with. To list ways that, number one, lesson facts, to list ways that being a Christian affects one's role as husband or wife. Hmm. We're going to list some ways, yeah, we're going to talk about it. The biblical principles that we're going to deal with is to understand why Christian marriages are unique and commit to honoring that uniqueness. Next, our daily application is to commit to submitting yourself to your spouse in fear, respect of God. Now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute, Pastor. What you, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I didn't hear you right. Yes, you know, y'all, you heard me right. It says com to commit, to commit it, to submitting, to commit to submitting yourself, yourself, to your spouse, man, woman, husband, wife, your spouse, in fear and in respect of God. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to walk that a little bit. And uh, so we're breaking this lesson down into two parts um, because that's the way the Lord brought it. Wives and the Lord is number one, and then husbands and Christ. That's number two. Now, the wives and the Lord, we start at verse 21, and we go down to 24. And then uh, the husband and, and Christ is verse uh, 25 and 33. So that, that's how we're going to approach it. That's how we're going to try to try to deal with this lesson today. And so I'm looking forward to it and I'm just I'm just excited, y'all. Y'all got to excuse me. You got to excuse me. So let, let me give you an introduction to this lesson. Um, year after year, uh, star-studded romantic comedies are released in Hollywood by the public and the public consumes them. I mean, they, they, the public just loves them. People meet, they have a first date, they share their experience and, you know, grown as human beings. They grow and next thing you know, they fall in love. And after they fall in love, you know, they go and get married and they're on that invention. 
um, the entertainment industry tells us it is what marriage is. Two people are meant for each other and their mutual fulfillment. Their romance makes everything right. Their marriage serves as nothing except the exclamation point on the romantic experience of self-fulfillment. Of course, most married people and probably most unmarried people will say that this view of marriage is nonsense. Yet the focus of romance and self-fulfillment still powerfully shapes people's understanding of marriage. So of course, that that is where we are. That 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 is being brought to us and is shaping us. But in the New Testament, marriage was as much misunderstood as it is today. Through this misunderstanding, then it, it then that misunderstanding that was in the day, back in the day, is still here today. And so what we're going to look at when we deal with this text in Ephesians is we're going to look at how Paul dealt with this marriage. But now, before I, I'm sorry, y'all, I ain't taught Sunday school in a while, and I was hoping for interaction today. <laughs> but let me, let me get this thing in my head right here. This word submit means that you want to give control to someone else. No, he didn't say want to give control to somebody else. Yes, that's what he said. It's how it is. And, and, and we, we walk around and we mistake that. Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. You give control to somebody else. You, you can do that. Everybody can do that. But the question then becomes, if we are submit to one another, we got to give control to one another. So that seems like nobody's in control. And that's not that's not that's not how, how, how God wants this. He wants it to be that we're so reverent and loving to one another that that when I yield my way to your way and when you, your wife or your spouse yields their way to your way that it's a mutual submission to one another people 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 submit to one another out of out of that love out of that respect out of that honor all of that is there when we submit to one another so the control issue shouldn't be an issue Nobody should be talking about, I'm in control of everything. Nobody should be talking, but God has an order to this thing. Y'all thought I was going off the deep end. No, I'm not. God has an order to this. He put an order together. He designed this thing the way he wanted it to be. And we as his children, we have to respect and reverence the way the Lord wants to put marriage together. So let me let me read this to you. Let me read this to you. I'm gonna put my Bible up so I can see it and I won't be looking so so far down. This this is this is a comment in my Bible. Paul says, Paul says, Paul says this. Paul had made a transition in inducing this teaching about the specific relationship of authority and submission among Christians by declaring unequivoc unequivocally that every spirit filled Christian is to be a humble and submissive Christian. This is the foundation to all the relationships in this section. No believer is inherently superior to any other believer. And that standing, in their standing before God, they are all equal. And we should be in fear of God. Ah, hallelujah. So, Everybody is equal in God. Our job then is to know how God wants this thing done in the family. 
So there has to be some submitting going on, some surrendering ourselves to another person, to, to give in and allow someone else to lead us. So that's the thing. When we get to the point where we're submitting, we allow someone else to lead us. So now the text, after he talks about, okay, submit one to another in the fear of the Lord, Paul goes in to talk about the wives. He said, okay, wives, I need to talk to you. Let's have a little conversation, wives. I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. Some of y'all, you know, I ain't saying you even did anything wrong and I'm trying to chastise you or anything like that. No, no, no. Really. I just want to talk about your role. We talked about your relationship. All, every one of us to submit to one another. But why? You got a role. So now, now when I read this one, when I read this one, I, I, want, I want to read it first out of the King James, and then I'm going to come back and read it out of the Message Bible. Because it's, it's just a blessing to hear the different translations of this. Okay? So, in the King James, it says, Wives, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife. It's also Christ. Mm -mm. It's head of the church. And he is so he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is submitted to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. Everything. Now, them, them, them strong words. You submit. He is a husband being the head. You know, all them words in there. Wife being subject. All of that's in there. Now, now understand, Paul is dealing with analogy. He's going to be dealing with a mystery between the, 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 the church and, 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 and marriage. But in this particular, he's dealing with that wife. Because he wants that wife to understand some things that is going to bless her and bless her marriage. And when the wife and is blessed and the marriage is blessed, the family is blessed. And when the family is blessed, the community is blessed. And when the community is blessed, the whole world is blessed. So you know we got some problems. You know I'm gonna bring it up. Cause I ain't got nobody to interact with me. I'm gonna bring it up. We got too many divorces going on. We got too many people in single family households where one, the husband or the other, other, other wife has separated and the mom or dad are separately raising the children. Um, that ain't the way God wants it. I ain't talking about divorce. I ain't talking about all. I ain't fussing with you. That's you between you and God. What I'm dealing with is it takes two, the husband and the wife with God, three, to raise a family, to put us in the right position. God has an order to it. So he goes, let me listen to the message Bible now. Wives. He says, understand and support your husband in ways that show your support for Christ. Uh-oh. So now, so now, the message Bible, it changes the word dramatically. So in the message Bible, he talks about support instead of submit. That's a great translation. Are you supporting of your spouse. Can your spouse come up to you and tell you anything that's going on in their lives and they find support? Mm. That's a good question. Or are you going to chastise them? Or are you going to be negative to them? But what do you do in your relationship? Now, now, I, 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 I like that word support. Now, now, watch what he says. Watch what he says now. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does the church. I got to go to this part, not domineering, but by cherishing it. Thank goodness for the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His grace is more than sufficient. His grace 
Oh, hallelujah. It's what saves us, and his grace is what keeps us. Why am I talking about grace? I'm talking about grace because I don't know about you. I sin. I make mistakes. I fall short of his glory. I don't know about you, but that's where I am. And because of that, my flaws and, and my flesh and my and my sins, I, I, I need some grace. I don't need a God that's going to come down here and dominate me and, and chastise me all the time. I want somebody that loves. And I'm so sure glad Jesus loves. And he cherished me to the point that he died for, for me. And I, and I say that because I want you to make this thing personal. You can say he died for me. You can say that he loves me. But God is, the word of God is right here, that the husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does the church. I don't know about you, Jesus is awesome. And so the husband has a responsibility to treat his wife as awesome as Jesus treats the church and the wife is looking for that now i gotta say this i've been married 36 years and all 36 of those years have been awesome why because i have a wife that supports me wholeheartedly i ain't saying she don't ever get on my nerves and all that kind of stuff everybody get on each other's nerves but still we in love with each other we're faithful to one another you know, I, I came across some stuff and I said, Ooh, can I share it with these? Can I share it with them? I said, yeah, this is a good time to share it. So, some three F's, three F's, three F's. Uh, 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 three F's of marriage, three F's of marriage. Here, here we go, three F's. So now calm down. Calm down now. Somebody, somebody getting their feelings, getting into it because I, I know some stuff I could say, but that ain't the ones I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so the first, the first of these F is you got to be able to feed one another. And when I say feed one another, I'm talking about your relationship has to be such that you enjoy what the other person is giving you. I ain't just talking about food. I'm talking about respect, honor, love, cherish. I'm talking about together. All of that support, that's feeding one another. When you're around somebody and they feed you, you just keep coming back for more and more. But the other F that I want to add, the second F, is feelings. I I I, I, I gotta say feelings, because see, there's another word, but you gotta have feelings for one another. I mean, not just the sexual chemistry stuff, but I mean, you gotta be able to look at your wife and look at your husband and go, that's mine. Woman, I see my woman all the time. I say, my boo, that's my boo. She come back, oh yeah, boo. You know. That's, we got feelings for one another. Then, the last one. This F here is probably the most important. You got to forgive one another. So, so, so you got to feed one another. You got you to gotta have feelings for one another. And you got to forgive one another. Forgiveness is a, is, is a huge one because, ooh, ooh. Sometimes the relationship gets rocky. Everybody's relationship gets rocky. People screaming at each other, fussing and fighting. And I'm going to talk about what we fuss and fight over in a minute. But somewhere along the line, you need to forgive one another. Now, 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 that's my, that's my three F's of marriage. Now I want to talk about, I want to talk about it from the standpoint of the three F's in marriage that cause conflict. <laughs> so I gave you three F's. I gave you three F's. I'm, I'm still on the woman. I'm going to get to the man. I gave you three F's that you need in your relationship. You need some feelings. Uh, uh, you, 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 you need to uh, be able to feed one another. And, 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 and you need to be able to 
to forgive one another. Now, I could add another F in there, say you got to be friends, but see, too many people get, get on that. I, that drives me nuts. My, my spouse is my best friend. Forget that. You ain't told your best friend everything. So I don't know why you come online talking about your wife or your husband, your best friend. I, that's just me now. I've been married 30, 30 some years. I got about 100 more to go because I got a good one. No, I, 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 we've been together for that long. But I have some folks I've been together all my life that I call best friends. I'll tell you this. I don't want my wife to be my best friend. I want my wife to be my best wife. Better than my best friend. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's not my BFF. She's my BWF. My best wife. Yes. That's what I want. But then let me go on. I'm getting long winded. But I'm enjoying it. And so those who come back and listen to this later, I hope you enjoy it too. Uh, there's some conflict areas. And I got three F's for that. In a marriage, you get a conflict going on between your family and your finances and your faith. Now those three areas will cause your marriage hell. To get your family out, do what the Lord says. He says it later on in this scrap. Uh, scrap. So, so a man ought to love his husband. I mean, a man ought to love his wife. He says later, and then he says, and you ought to cling to her. <laughs> get, go, leave your mother and father and cling to her. Get your family out of your marriage. I don't care what's going on. Get them out. Next one is finances. Everybody got ways they want to spend money. Some people are conservative. Some people are liberal. Some people are stingy. Some people are splurge. All of that. Y'all got to work your finances out. Now, I'm going to tell you. In 36 years, we still working on ours. If I'm hard-headed and she's stubborn, but we making it. <laughs> we making it. We making it. And then finally, faith. Now, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know how to be married to somebody that's not a Christian. That's all I've been married to, 36 years. And we have a thing that we do. We say Christ is at, at the top of the pyramid, and then this is me and her. And the closer we get to Christ, uh-oh, can I do it? The closer we get to Christ, oh, yeah, I can't do the, I can't do the love signal. I can't do it. The closer we get to Christ is that's love. So you need that faith. You need somebody to have the same faith. And, and I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, if you choose somebody with a different faith, it can still work. I want you to know something. You're a Christian. Jesus died for you. I don't care what other faith you marry into. You're going to To the day of eternity. Oh, yeah. So, so those, those three things can cause conflict, and you got to work those two, three things out. I, I, now you say, Pastor, I don't know where you're going. You went all over the place with this. But no, I had to go that route. I'm, I'm still on this wife. So here it is. Wives, understand and support your husband in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife and the, the way Christ does to the church but not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ, as he exercised such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husband. Now, this is the message, Bible. It left support and dealt with submission. It had to. You, you, you can't get around the word submission. You, you can call it support, but you can't get around that word submission. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't get around that word. So, husband, I got to talk to you. I'm, I'm going to come back to the wives a bit later because that's how Christ is. He says in verse 25, dealing with the husband. Now, we dealt with the wives. Now, we're dealing with the husband. Husband, 
go on, go all out in your love for your wife, exactly as Christ did for the church. That, that's the message of the Bible. I got to read it. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's, that's, that's what we call to do. Now, note, it never said to the wives up here that they got to love us. <laughs> but mercy God, we got to love them. Because we are the source of the love in the marriage. After we get it from Christ, then we're the one that permit. If you don't love your wife, man, I'm telling you, you got some problems. You got some serious problems. Listen, listen to the problem. Husband, love your wives as Christ has also loved the church and gave himself, and gave himself also, and gave himself for her. Now, why did he do that? That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, by the washing of water by the word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now watch this. Watch this from the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, Husband, go all out in your love for your wife. Expect exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. A love marked by giving and not get it. Christ's love, Christ's love makes the church old. His words invoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dress her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness, and this is how husbands ought to love their wives. Ooh. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you want to make your wife smile, brothers, just tell them maybe how good they are. Tell them how good they cook. Tell them just how good they walk. Tell them even how good they sleep. Whatever they doing, just ooh, baby, ooh, baby, ooh. Now you want to tell a man, wives, what you want to encourage him? Tell him how good he was. But when those positive vibes start coming, everything happens in the marriage. The wife got a head up. The husband, he got his head up. Everybody is, is looking to Jesus because we're, we're, we're happy with each other. Now, it's an ebb and flow. There are times when you know, it's going to ebb, where you get mad, and other times it's going to flow where it's all good. That's what marriage is all about. And brothers, when you start complimenting your wife, if you want to flirt with somebody, flirt with your wife. Man, you know I love flirting with Sandra. I told her, oh, baby, you, you, you my chocolate drop. Oh, baby, you, 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 you my, you my coconut coffee. Oh, I just get to going and talking that noise and talking about how sweet she is and all of that. So it's just good. I'm gonna go on. I'm going back to my King James version. I'm at the 29th verse. No one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ, as the Lord, does the church. We ain't got no business hating ourselves. But if you hate your wife, I'm sorry, you hating yourself. And if you hating yourself like that, I'm sorry, you, you about need to go. 
I, I like that old song that says it's cheaper to keep them. <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper to keep them because if you let her go, you letting the best part of you go. Because you just being mean and stupid. I'm sorry. And ladies, I could vice versa that, but I'm just talking about husbands, right? Men, we have to have self-love. We got the love of Christ. We love ourselves. We got the love of our wife as Christ loved the church. And that goes all the way back to, 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 to the golden rule. That we ought to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul. And love thy neighbor as thyself. If you don't love yourself, you ain't gonna love your neighbor. Women, part of your problem with your husband is not you. You don't love yourself. And so sometimes you just got a reminder. Don't you love yourself? <laughs> and they gonna say, yeah, I love myself. Well, I'm you. You're me. Let's love one another as one. Going on. <laughs> he goes on to says for verse 30, for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery. I'm going to stop it at 31. I want to come back on to the next. Message Bible says this. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves his father and his mother and cherishes his wife no longer to. They become one flesh. This is a huge mystery. And I don't pretend to understand it. What is clear to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife. Think about how you're supposed to treat your wife to uh, what, what is it? WWJ? Right, right. <laughs> what would Jesus do? WWJD? Look at how Jesus treats the church. That's how you ought to treat your wife. Well, I'm on my last part of this lesson. One more verse. King James says, Nevertheless, let each one of you in, in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let his wife see that she respects her husband. That's the King James Version. Respect your husband. You go to the Message Bible, it says, and this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself, loving himself and loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Love, honor, and cherish. Tell death do you part. Love, honor, and cherish. Tell death do you part. I know I was long-winded today, but that's just, you know, first time out. I I don't have no one interacting with me on the on my conference call portion. So um, I'm enjoying this lesson. As I get ready to close it, I want to give you some things to ponder. Number one, submit to others. Submit Submission to other runs counter to our natural impulses, but it is expected in a Christian relationship. Number two, for the Christian husband and wife, Paul pictures a gospel-shaped relationship between uh, faithful disciples of Christ. Number three, in, in a Christian marriage, there's to be a mutual love for each other, a covenant bond that is patterned after the Lord's love for his church. Remember this, thought to remember, love without Love without self-sacrifice isn't love. I'm going to say it again. Love without self-sacrifice. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this lesson. Woo! It's hard getting back on the horse, God. 
um, preaching and teaching again like this. And I just thank you for all your blessings. Those who are listening to this video and tape at another time, I just want to thank God for you. I've been basically off the, the horse of preaching and teaching for about a year, getting myself together. So I'll be starting back up with the point. I'm looking forward to this word. But Lord, we just thank you for it. We praise you. Remember next week, our new lesson for next week is God is faithful. We're going to be coming from Exodus chapter 16. God is faithful. We're going to look at how Israel uh, uh, complained about Moses and Aaron and how, how God helped his people. I just want to thank you. I think I'm through talking now. Y'all be blessed. May God richly bless you and keep you until we can come back again 